Hey, did you ever get the sneaky feeling that something's going on behind your back? That there's things going on maybe in government that you just don't know about? Well, our next author has been experimenting with that, has been investigating, and has been writing. My name is Vin DeQuino. Our next guest is Nolan J. Reynolds. Nolan, let's talk writing. Thanks for having me. Vin. I am amazed at what you've done here. Oh. Uh, an incredible book about what happens behind our back. Tell us a little bit about Bilderberg. Well, yes, the title of the book is Bilderberg Ultimate Control. And uh, basically, I just, I, I was told uh, actually to start writing. Um, my wife had suggested that I start writing because of some of the simple writings I, I wrote in cars and, and especially occasion uh, cars and so on. And uh, I sat down and I said, hmm, writing. And uh, you, know, you, you first wonder, what well, can I do this? And so on. I sat down and the words just started pouring out. Well, this is every, anything but simple writing. Well, uh, this is a real intricate story about what may be going on behind our backs in big government. Yes. Uh, so, in your own words, tell us what have you created here? What is this book about? Well, it's kind of interesting. When I started writing, I, I basically relate to how things were, where we are, and where we're going. Uh, I have a firm belief that the billionaires have been running the world. They're the Bilderbergs, mm. let me explain a little bit about what the Bilderbergs are. They're about 130 members that meet every year. They don't announce it it's, uh, until about maybe about a month beforehand. Different locations around the world every year since 1954. Bilderberg was the hotel in a little small town called Oosterberg. And it was 1954, May of 1954, where the first meeting. And you'll be astounded on the list of members that attend these meetings. And I believe they have a firm grip on what is going on. So now, this is organized control? Yes. Yes, wow. absolutely, organized control. But the interesting part about writing, I just want to step back a second and talk about writing, is uh, basically I just really referred to how things were, like my growing up in, in a small town and, and talking about uh, how wonderful things were growing up, playing with the neighbor's children uh, outside instead of you know being indoors nowadays, playing video games and so on. Yeah. So y you know nowadays people don't even know their neighbors practically, and either the kids are inside instead of outside playing kickball or you know getting crazy because the ice cream man is coming down the block or right. something like that. Yeah, so the good days. Yes, absolutely. So I refer to that, and and I almost almost feel a, a, a little bit sad that that our children nowadays don't know the the upbringing or the lifestyle that we had back when I was growing up. So we've lost a lot of that family tradition, yes. neighborhood tradition, yes. community tradition. Absolutely. I believe they should bring back the blue laws, where mm -hmm. on Sunday yes, no right. business oh, open. I remember those. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> the only thing that was open was a hospital, emergency services, and things like that. Mm -hmm. We had a lot more closer ties with family. Everyone was forced to mm -hmm. spend time with the family on Sunday and so on. And uh, now, going back into the things I write about, I was very intrigued, and I always have been intrigued, and I mentioned this in the book, about the Kennedy assassination. I was four years old when I saw that. And having visited Dealey Plaza myself, Dealey Square, I was just, the place looks frozen in time the same way I saw it on television when I was a, a young boy. Now, you're maintaining that the Kennedy assassination was not simply a man who decided he was going to kill not. the president. That is, 70 to 80 percent of the people in America believe that, and I, you know what, I mentioned the word conspiracy in my book one time because as soon as you mention the word conspiracy, people think, oh, it's, it's far-fetched, it's nutty. And Russ Baker, uh, another author that he was an investigative journalist that interviewed 500 witnesses in a five-year period, confirms that there is a shadow government controlling everything. A regardless, shadow government. Yeah, a shadow government, regardless of who is in the White House. So the presidents are being controlled by, uh, I These are the people with money. So money yeah. talks? Large money. I'm not talking about millionaires. I'm talking about billionaires. Nolan, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. Should I be afraid? 
Well, you should have an open awareness. There is, uh, they say there's power in numbers, and everyone should be aware. They shouldn't just sit in their backyards barbecuing and just going into, they should be aware, they should investigate, they should uh, not listen to mainstream media because it is controlled by corporations. Corporate, wow. you're not getting the true uh, um, information that you should be understanding uh, of what's going on. You should research for yourself. Do so not someone is making major decisions for us while we sleep and barbecue and play. That's correct. That's correct. Wow. There are meetings every year that, that these things take All place. Right. So tell me about this book. Now this book mm -hmm. is somewhat fictional. Yes. But based on? Facts. Facts. Okay. Yes, I use true facts of everything that's happened. I, I talk about the, the, the two assassins, you know, Robert Kennedy, John Kennedy, Martin Luther King, people, you know, John Lennon, people that have, and you know, my, you might say, oh, John Lennon is, oh, he was shot by one. But there are things like brainwashing, mind control, and things like that. Now, that sounds far-fetched, but listen, the CIA, they do things that we don't know about. And right. you know what? They, they go and govern, and, and it's my belief that it was an elaborate scheme by the CIA, by the FBI, that did this with, with the Kennedy assassination and sculpted out the rest of the 60 years. So your years. feeling is we should not believe everything we hear? Absolutely not. Uh, you should research the information yourself. And not all true information, for instance, is on the Internet. You need to, to decipher yeah. for yourself and just, just read and read what people write and maybe read you know six or seven readings and see three of those or four of those readings have the same information then you yeah. can you can you know I uh, uh, I did a book on Sybil Luddington mm -hmm. and it blew my mind mm -hmm. because it wasn't what I started with right I mean Sybil Luddington by the time I finished the book went from having six children right to one child. Isn't that interesting? Uh, her husband's name changed three times. Right. And we were celebrating this woman, having parades. Right, right. Anna Hyatt Huntington built a statue on Lake Glenida to honor her. We have a stamp. And yet, most of the information we had about her right. from the ride until her death. Right. It's Not interesting because when you sit down to write, and you know, there, I believe there's a writer in all of us. You need mm -hmm. to sit down and say, can I do this? And when I started writing, I said, and my background is basically event production, so I've been in event production for most of my life. So I know how to entertain. So what I did was I put in a fictional plot to get the information across. So the plot is, is fictional about a family that survives catastrophic uh, situation. And, uh, okay, let's go yeah. there. Yeah. Let's go there. All right, so it's a story of a family yes. living in well, rural America? Basically here in Long Island. Uh, oh. Basically, the, most Long Islanders, um, actually, I should say, uh, the Long Islanders that have migrated have migrated usually from the five boroughs out east. And mm -hmm. this is the guideline that I used, that the people that had stayed here and had actually, uh, you know, what would happen. Like, I don't know where you were in 9-11, but uh, I remember in 9-11, I was like, where yeah. do we go? Oh, you I know when too. that happened. So yep. it was quite interesting. So I have this family that, that uh, encounters uh, a situation. Uh, Dave Napoli is a, is a computer analyst, and one day he gets a phone call from a longtime friend that he went to college with, John Hughes. Very smart individual. Things don't usually go well with him because he comes from a poor background. But he, um, he has encountered a group that ultimately saves Dave Napoli and his family's life by going through underground bunkers that mm. exist today. Now, a lot of things I mentioned oh, yeah. here, we have underground bunkers right now. Oh, I remember the days when we were building them. We were, we were afraid of the Cuban crisis. Yes, yes. And, uh, and people were building all these, putting food. Yep. Oh, you can look amazing. it up. You can actually buy, uh, like, like, condo, like, you, like you, you buy a condo, you can pay twenty five to 50000 and they can sustain life for five years underground. Wow. What are these people afraid of? Something, something's, you know, happening. So you should have an awareness of what's going to happen. So now does this family mm -hmm. know that something's happening? Absolutely. At first, his whole family doesn't. But when he encounters the, the telephone call with John Hughes, I, I don't want to make this too telling because, you know, you'd, I'd like people to right. read for themselves. But mm -hmm. he goes to, uh, for a meeting uh, with John Hughes in a diner, and that's when everything starts to unfold. That's when he, he discovers uh, the Geneva Project, which is a utopian organization that was developed by um, Marcus Felipe, the founder of the Geneva Project, where he constructs these aqua cities to build... Uh, you know, for the future, for 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 inhabit, you know, where they can inhabit it in the future, because water is a is a, a very great resource for the future.
Hmm. Yeah. So he begins to get suspicious. Yes. He begins to know that things are going on. So right. what does he do? Basically, he joins forces. What happens is two major cities are attacked. Who knows, uh, you know, who, who uh, m made the attack, but uh, generally uh, we, we believe that it was government-based that attacked two cities, and now revolution uh, starts. Now, uh, because Dave Napoli has met John Hughes, he, he uh, helps him actually uh, develop the G Geneva Project through his computer analyst skills and so on. Now, again, the Geneva Project yes. involved... Uh, basically the building of aqua cities uh, and where people can live because there's a problem that that has come up uh, recent in recent years w among the Bilderbergs among the meetings is the overpopulation problem what to do now there's a lot of speculation that they're going to try and uh, you know minimize the population through disease or through catastrophe and whatnot. We've had these these speculations, and it's coming up more and more. In fact, this Friday, I don't know if you you know, but it, it's a big date uh, in regards to the Mayan calendar where it ends. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's supposed to be you know, the end of the world. So right? who knows if that's going to be? You know, yeah. you don't you don't want to. Here's the thing, y you don't want to go off on tangents where you think that uh, you start talking crazy. We have a tendency in this country to, as soon as you hear the word conspiracy, oh, it mustn't be true, it's false information. It's not, you, you, really, you really need to research. We know for a fact that Oswald was not the lone killer in that. The Warren Commission w w had members in, in, in that um, uh, investigative co committee that, that actually despised Kennedy. It doesn't make any sense. And, and why would Robert Kennedy be killed as well? Why was Oswald killed? Why was Ruby killed? It doesn't make sense. This is to hide information. And, and, the, and the records are sealed until the year 2029. In October, I believe it was 1993, the period for, for releasing that information was extended by the president that was in, 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 uh, in, in the presidency. And you're saying this was all bottom drawer. They all Absolutely. They knew what why was happening. Why don't we know the information? And why aren't people outraged about finding out exactly what happened. Why are the manipulators constantly diverting our attention elsewhere? There was an, after the movie JFK, Oliver Stone's movie JFK, there was an investigative committee that went on for four years and was shut down by the Clinton-Bush administration. Why? I mentioned that in my book. There should be, a, 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 you know, some, some further investigation and there should be closure to the JFK. We cannot go forward in this country unless we know what happened to John F. Kennedy. He was a great man, I believe, and I believe. It, this has nothing to do with being Democrat or Republican or anything. It's about our lives. It's about our future. And uh, So you know. these, these people who are controlling mm -hmm. are bipartisan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but they're there. They Very actually wealthy, exist. Yeah. Yep. They're wealthy. Very wealthy. I'm not talking, like I said, I mentioned earlier, these are not just millionaires. These are billionaires. These are people w in an exclusive club. It's top 10 um, people of the world that wow. control. It's the oil and, industry, and the banking industry. this is not new. Industry. This has no. been going on. Yes. For the past 60 years. Wow. Now, there's a lot other... Uh, factors as well, as far as many believe that the currency will be changed in this, in this world, in this uh, country, excuse me, I should say. Just like the euro was, was mm -hmm. changed uh, in recent w years, they, um, they are uh, planning to now change the currency. According to the book, mm -hmm. uh, is there a happy ending? <laughs> well, yes, I'd like to think so. Uh, you know, I don't want, like, again, I don't want to be too telling on the yeah, book, yeah. but yes, mm -hmm. uh, there is a happy ending, not what people might think a happy ending is, right. but we know there's a change coming. We know there's an awareness that there's a change coming. Is this family in trouble? Oh, yeah. Every family is in trouble. If you're in the world today, uh, <laughs> things are, you know, there's a Somebody culmination. Somebody is making decisions for you Correct. while you eat and Correct. sleep. And they have a place to go when things happen. They wow. have those underground bunkers that they, you know, the, the president is safe and all the, the, the wealthy is safe. Uh, the people that have to worry, the people that are living hand to mouth, the people yeah. that are struggling. You know, I dedicate my book to the people of the industrial Asian era. In other words, the people after World War II, the hard working people. It was a great yeah. era. The blue a collar workers era. And, of America. And I mention these people in my book and being a child and having these people in my life, <laughs> it was... It was just, uh, I was honored to know these people. I also dedicate the book to John F. Kennedy Jr. because, wow, wow. having your dad taken away like that yep. and that salute yep. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, Everyone I remember. remembers that. I, I mean, I remember sitting in front of that TV, yep. glued yep. to that, wondering. Even then, I wondered who actually did this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? everyone and, did. Yeah, you know, everyone did. You should visit Dealey Square. And I just want to make one mention. Everyone talks about the media propaganda words like the grassy knoll and and other things. Right. I stood behind that fence at Dealey Square. And I looked down at where the president passed. Now, there's a decline. You're talking about 50 feet. Now, I, I have experience with rifle. Uh, I've been part of rifle clubs growing up and so on. So anyone with some experience could have made that shot. Wow. It was a very easy, easy shot. And to clear it, you know, you have a powerful organization like the CIA. They can do anything, and they go unmonitored. What happens if they're making a decision that is obviously illegal, that isn't exactly for the benefit of the country? Who monitors what they do? Yeah, because it's a secret society, basically. Exactly, exactly. And there's no one right. watching over them. No one's higher. And, and you're saying that they control the presidents? Yep. They control everything? Everything, absolutely. Wow. I believe That's it was scary. A it know. really is. I believe it was a message. Uh, the assassination of Kennedy was a message that was sent to future presidents to say, "Better listen to what we do." I mean, you wonder. We have our first black president. You wonder, you know, when when he was elected, you're like, "Oh, there's a possibility that he could be assassinated." Because why hasn't he been? Because he's listening to them. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's what I believe, but that's okay. my own belief. All right. Well, you know. You know you're the author. You yes. can believe what you want, Nolan. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, all right, so how does he go about finding out what's going on? Well, John Hughes briefs him, and in the process of, of getting briefed, uh, a situation occurs that plummets him into this major story that he's like, wow, I really didn't want to know about this, but now that I know, I could help mankind. And, and in does. this book, what does he do for a living? He's a commuter, uh, computer analyst. Computer he's, analyst. He's very so intelligent. He works for a very, uh, you know, high high um, high tech uh, computer company. That basically, uh, what happens is through the Geneva Project is they 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 do exactly what's going on now. Now this is pretty scary stuff. You talk about super beings. Right now, that is being uh, produced. Uh, I don't want to mention any names, but there's a, a co corporation that actually converts cruise ships to uh, cities, aqua cities that go out about 12 miles into the uh, into the ocean, uh, away from you know in international waters, so they don't have any government, uh, any country. And this stuff's really going on. Absolutely. And I, I woke up one night, and I, I mentioned this in the book. I woke up one night, and it was about 3:30. One of those situations where you wake up out of a sound sleep, and the TV's on. And they were talking about robots. Can they build robots that can think for themselves? That's what's happening right now. Wow. Putting the These human things are being created. As we speak. It's a program called 2045 program. And they're being developed right now as we speak. It's uh, the company that converts the cruise ships to, to, to city uh, uh, dwellings is called uh, Blue Seed. What will these robots do? Who knows? Who yeah. knows whether <laughs> that it'll be used for, you, you know, uh, we don't know. You know, I, I don't know. When, when I went to college, I remember uh, a professor of mine, we were walking past the door. He goes, you know what they're doing in there? They're working on the brain. So, wow, what does that sound <laughs> like? You're like, they're working on the brain. It was the computer. Now, look at how far we've come. Oh, look at our yeah. video games. Oh, yeah. I correlate the video games to the computer pro uh, pro progress. I'm still amazed by the GPS. Absolutely. The fact that you could be driving Isn't that incredible? and it tells you it, where it, you are. Right. Tells you when you're making a turn and tells you if you've taken the wrong turn. Right. Absolutely. Tells you to make a U turn, go back. You just reminded this me. This freaks me out. You right, reminded me of something else that's happening right now that no one is really aware of. They're called RFIDs, radio frequency identification devices. Basically, what these devices are, they're being, right now as we speak, if your passport is expired, they're in your passport. What RFIDs are, like GPS, they know where, whoever has that passport, they know where you are when you're out of the country and all the information about you, your social security number, your, your name, everything about you is in this. Now, so it's a tracking device. A tracking device. Now, ah. it's projected. Many conspiracists feel that through fear, they're going to get these RFIDs in the tips of Big human brother. beings. Yeah, watching you. Look at the cameras that are out on our streets oh. right now. I mean, even though I understand the, the concept behind speeding, but 
we, by doing one thing, they were also getting something else. The patriarch was formed that way, fear. Oh, now if you open up a bank account, they know everything about you. Then the Military Defense Act, where anyone can come into your home at any given time without provocation, without any reason, and without a trial, and they can imprison you indefinitely. It's just scary, scary stuff. We yeah. just, you know, the technology that so is out there. So they not only know where we are, they're controlling. Ultimate the control. Ultimate control. Absolutely. Not and interesting. That's, now, tell me about the Bilderberg. Now, you uh, said the Bilderberg is a hotel. Yes, that was the first meeting of, of uh, these individuals in 1954 May, a Dutch town called Oosterberg, as I mentioned. And so this the, is not a name you made up, No, Bilderberg. no. The, the, the hotel, you can go there today, and they're still there. The but it building. was the original meeting place. Yes, the original meeting place was in, it was in that Dutch town. Now, do the players change? You're talking 60 years. So of course, obviously people die. the people who were involved 60 but years ago are older there are children uh, and older there are, dead. Yeah, they're world leaders usually, pol political, business leaders, um, you know, influential figures. Uh, you know, I can give you a list. You can you can actually look at the list online. You can actually see who the list of people, who the so players are. So we know are. these people yes. who... And media is invited, but they're not allowed to report on the meetings. Wow. Isn't and that? they control the media, so they can make sure that that happens. Correct. All right. Nolan, tell me about yourself as a writer. Where, well, when, how do you write? Well, I basically... You have a little, <laughs> little hole in the closet where you... You know, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> you know, that's funny, Vinny. I sit down some nights, and it's exciting for me to read. Like, my next book won't be on this. I'm, I'm working on my second book right now on, on what's happening. And in fact, uh, with the, the horrific situation that happened on Friday, it, it, I oh, start wow. after Columbine, I vowed to write about bullying, and that's my next book. I'm in my, my fourth chapter, and now we have another school shooting. I, I'm trying to, to stop that situation from occurring. And I know there's debate on gun laws and whatnot. But anyway, getting back to uh, how I write and so on, it's exciting. I actually get excited. Because I've been in the event production business, because I'm all about entertainment, I sit down and I go into this imagination world. And it's funny, when I was writing this and I was following the family around the 27th chapter, I couldn't wait to get in back into that room on that desktop oh, yeah. to find out what was going to happen. So oh, yeah. it was oh, like, yeah. you know. That's, I mean, that's what some writers say. The best thing about writing is that you're the first one to get to find out right, what happens. Right, right. Yeah. Isn't that oh, great? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's I mean, true. I, I, it was funny, uh, I was doing a writing lesson with a group of students recently, and this big boy started crying. I said, hey, you okay? He said, no. And I said, everything all right? He said, I'm writing about a boy whose brother was killed. I said, oh, it, that didn't happen to you, did it? He said, no, <laughs> it happened in the story, but I mean, it's good. I'm making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is very funny. And, and, and that's true. true, you know. It's <laughs> true. I've got to say, I think my favorite part of the book was reminiscing about everything and really just trying to uh, to get back to, to where life used to be and, and how yeah. it's changed and so on. Yeah. So, Will it ever get back to where it was, Nolan? Listen, that is up to the people. It's not up to one person, you know, even though in this book my publisher makes it sound like, you know, one man can make all the difference. Yeah. You know, it can. It, I believe that it's, it's a combined effort of, of awareness, uh, of knowing what is happening. And I think people yeah. are more aware today than, than they used to be. I don't think we're as blind as we were, you know, during yeah. the Kennedy assassination in the years that followed. And, and it is frightening. When, yes. when you have things like, you know, school shootings absolutely and and you you want to say okay well no. from now on we're going to do this and right. we're going to stop it it's there's can gray areas stop it? there's what gray can areas can you stop yeah how much you know how much can we actually control absolutely i agree um you don't know and it's up to the will of the people it's it's yeah. it's all about the human race but there are some changes that can be made and absolutely hopefully if we can get the people better. thinking and yep. moving in the right direction there's power in numbers we and can make a difference exactly there's seven billion people in the world so Wow, I mean that's that's really uh, what it's all about, and uh, it's 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 the will of the people. We can't be run by the oil conglomerates and the banking yep. elite, and that's what's happening right now. So now you have a publisher. Yes, and great guy by the way, great great company, wonderful. He's he became practically my mentor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he that, definitely. That is what I talked to him, and he's wonderful. What about revising and editing? Oh, uh, let me tell you something. I wrote this story in nine months. 
Wow. It took me over two years to edit it. There you go. Oh, I know. You don't think about grammar. You don't think about, and that's what my publisher says. You know, uh, Nolan, just write the book. Don't write the story. Write your ideas. We're not. We don't care about your grammar, spelling at first. Yeah, we'll, we'll work with you, you on know. that. Get the story. Right. Exactly. Out. Exactly. And and then he said, you know what? Then after it's done, then go back and do your preliminary editing and so. On. My God, I, I think I've read the book about forty times. I know. I know. I know that feeling. Right. That you have to do. Uh, what I tell writers, it's not writing a book. It's working a book. Right. You have to work it. Right. You look at it. You right. read it again. Another thing that I consider a gem is you don't realize that when you write that first page, it's not the same as when you write the last page. Mm -hmm. When you get to that last page, oh, you boy. know things you didn't know when Absolutely. you wrote that first Absolutely. page. Absolutely. So that's when you go yep. back yep. and you start all over again. Yep. You read yep. and, and you have that. Does this make sense? Does that yeah. make sense? Does this you have flowing? that foresight that you didn't have before. And it's a plan. You know, when I got my first review on the book, it was really interesting because I wanted, whether it was a good review or a bad review, I didn't want just tell me, you know, that it's great just because you, you read it and that's what I want to hear. So now we have some bad news. Hmm. Bad news is, this book isn't officially out yet, right? Well, the, the print edition isn't. It comes out January and February of 2013, but it's available in all ebook formats okay. Amazon.com so, and, and Barnes and Noble. And so, so people on. can read yeah. this book now. Absolutely. In, e in, in a second. They can go online and actually put in Bilderberg Ultimate Control or my author name, and uh, the book will pop up and you can have it in seconds. You wow. know, it's, a, it's a, what the first review that I got said that it was a very fast paced story. It's a page turner, which I was pleased to hear that. And I'm going to use that information to write my second book. So, you've written a good book. Mm -hmm that's well worth reading. A little scary, yeah. <laughs> uh, but worth reading. Yes. And you have had an opportunity to meet Nolan J. Reynolds. You've had an opportunity to think, and now you have an opportunity to read even more about what this man is trying to tell us actually exists in this country. Nolan, I cannot thank you enough well, thank for being you for, with us thank today. Thank you for having us. Uh, I look forward not only to reading the rest of this. I read most of this, but I had to <laughs> hurry up. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm looking forward to your next book oh, about bullying. I agree with you. Yes. Bullying is almost as scary yes. as this billionaire power control. Well. Thank you for joining us. You, thank you for being here. Thank you for Again, having me. Again, Nolan, I cannot thank you enough I appreciate for sharing it. Thank you very much. your expertise with us. Thank you for joining us.